So let's look at an example of a coefficient of skewness. So we are asked to use the data below to calculate the coefficient of skewness. So we have 5, 7, 11, 8, 3, 12, 14, 4, 8, and 8. So that's what we are asked to use to calculate the coefficient of skewness. So what is the formula for calculating the coefficient of skewness? We know that to calculate the coefficient of skewness, we have our sk to be equal to 3 multiplying x bar minus what? The median value and then divide by what the standard deviation value, right? So in a situation where you're not asked to, where you're not told the formula to use, you must go by the second formula, which is what? 3 multiplying x bar minus median and then divide by the standard deviation. I hope that is clear. So here, that means that we need to find a value for the mean, the value for the median, and the value for the standard deviation. I hope that is clear. So in this case, you are going to arrange this raw data on group data in ascending order of magnitude so that we can determine these parameters in this formula. So in arranging in ascending order, I'm going to have here to what? start with what? 3, okay? You start with 3, then 4, then we have 5. Then we have seven, we have eight, we have eight, we have eight here, and then we move on to eleven, then we have twelve, then we have what fourteen, supposed to be ten. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. So ten. So once you're able to arrange in ascending order, that is a good start. So we must first of all find what the mean then we find the mode and then we find the standard deviation but we can easily find the median from this data very smart and sharp so that's what we're going to do to find the median here for on group data we are going to come from the front side and then the back side so that we can locate what the middle value so since uh, this set of data is actually up to 10 we are going to count so we have what one two three four so end here and Come to the back side, we have one, two, three, four, and we'll end here. So that means that we have what eight two eight at the middle of what this what uh data in terms of the ascending of that. So to find the median, then we'll say that mid value is going to be what is going to be one over two into bracket eight plus what eight. If you haven't watched the measures of central tendency, I'll provide a link there. I've explained detail about how we find the median for a group and then group in that line. That's why I'm not going there in that case. So you are going to get what? Eight. So that becomes our median. So once you get that, that is fine. Then you also move on to find what? Our mean. So how do you find the mean? So here in this case, we're going to sum up all these values, right? And then divide by what the number, which is what? 10. So we're going to have our mean to be equal to 3 plus 4 plus 5, plus 7, plus 8, plus 8, plus 8, plus what? 11, plus 12, plus what? 14. And then divide all by what? 10. When you add the numerator, you're supposed to get what? 80. Divide by 10. Then we are getting our mean to be equal to what? 8. So that is our mean for this set of what? On group data. So once you're able to get the mean, that is fine. Then we must proceed to find what we call our standard word deviation. How do you find a standard deviation? Here, I'm going to arrange uh, them, I mean, the same way, but I'm going to list them vertically so that you can easily go through the standard deviation uh, formula to deduce that. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to have our column for x. So our column for x is going to be what? 3, 4, 5. Then we have seven. Remember, we have for eight in a group of what three. So just have to have eight here. I mean, they're going to have a frequency for this. Then we have eleven. Then we have twelve. Okay, let me create a space here. So we have twelve. We have eleven here. Then we have twelve. Then we have what fourteen. Then we move on to finding our frequency. So for 3, the frequency is 1, 4 is 1, 5 is 1, 7 is 1, 8 is 3, right? 11 is 1, 12 is 1, 14 is 1, right? So once you're able to get that, we said to find what the standard deviation for an ungrouped data, standard deviation xd should always be equal to what the square root of what uh, 
x minus x bar all squared and then divide by what n since we were not told of whether this data is a sample or a population we just use the population approach to go to find what the standard deviation but here we are able to uh, add frequencies to it so we are going to multiply here by what f at the end of the day so let's take note of that so it means that we need to have a column for what x minus x bar so that let's go by that way too so you have x minus x bar all squared right so it means that we're going to deviate the mean which is eight from this set of values of x okay so let's take note of that so when i deviate eight from three i'm getting what negative five right and negative five squared should fetch me positive 25 when i deviate eight from four i'm getting negative four negative four squared should fetch me 16 when i deviate eight from five i'm getting negative three negative three, negative three squared should fetch me nine when I deviate 8 from 7, I'm getting negative 1. Square should put us 1. Then deviate 8 from 8, I'm getting 0. Square of 0 is 0. Deviate 8 from 11, I'm getting 3. Square of 3 is what? 9. Deviate 8 from 12, I'm getting 4. Square of 4 is 16. Deviate 8 from 14, I'm getting what? 6. Square of 6 is what? 36. Right? So once you're able to get that, we also have to find a column for what? f minus x bar or squared so that means that you're going to multiply frequencies by the x minus x bar or squared these are the values are we there so one multiplying 25 we are getting 25 here we are getting 16 here we are getting 9 here we are getting 1 here we are getting 0 here we are getting 9 here we are getting 16 here we are getting what 36 so i don't know that you find the total sum you also find the total sum of the frequencies so for my total sum when i add or I had here to be what? 1, 1, 2. That's 112. And that's what the frequency is supposed to get to what? 10 in that line. So, therefore, to find our standard deviation, we'll say that xd should be equal to the square root of what? This value, which we know is what? 112. So, 112 divided by what? The number of uh, frequencies, which is what? 10. All right. So, what are we getting? Supposed to get to what? Our square root of what? 11.2. So when you take the square root of 11.2, you're supposed to get what? 3 point, approximately two decimal places, would get 3.35 in that line. So this is going to be our standard deviation for this data. So once you get a standard deviation of this data, then we can show that we find our coefficient of what? Skewness. So therefore say that coefficient of skewness using formula two should be equal to what? Three multiplying x bar minus the mid value and then divide by what the standard deviation so what is our mean which is what eight so we have three multiplying eight what is our median we had a median value to what a2 so we have here to what eight and then divide by the standard deviation of what 3.35 so what is happening here eight minus eight is fetching as zero so that means that everything on top here is zero zero out of 3.25 is zero so that should inform you that what uh carl pearson actually actually proposed as a question of actually skewness is actually true once you're able to get a value of what zero that is telling us the type of skewness this set of data will be and this is what we call what a cinematrical or distribution this is a normal so when you represent this set of data on a graph you're going to have what a normal what uh distribution being a cinematrical distribution it isn't going to spread evenly but we said that for a cinematrical distribution we are going to get the skewness value to what zero right so if we are getting a different value then you should be able to know how to what explain if we were to be hedging towards us if we are getting positive value then that would have been a positive skewed but if we're getting something negative or close to negative that would have been what a negative skewed what distribution so the value actually informed the type of skewness we are going to get when we represent a set of data in a form of a bell-shaped form so let's take note of that. And this brings us to the end of what skinness of a set of data. So thank you so much for watching this video. If the video was really helpful to you, please go ahead to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and then share. So I will see you in the next section. Bye-bye.